Hey, I'm Amanda Hawking, and for writing on Wednesdays this week, I wanted to talk about uh, something that I feature in my books and that I read a lot of different characters in different books. So I wanted to talk about it, and that is alpha males. I do write a lot of romance novels, and I primarily have written young adult novels. And so when reading a lot of romance novels, if you've read any romance novels that have come out like ever, um, you've probably encountered one of those alpha male leads who's come in and is very like dominant and take charge and he's a very kind of like a, a hard character but then you know it's the love of a, a woman that softens him and opens him up. It's a very common uh, character and it's one that, that a lot of readers really like. It's one that I like sometimes, especially when it's well done, but even sometimes when it's not well done if I'm being honest. An alpha male lead can come in uh, you know, a variety of types of problematic and unproblematic. So just because you are alpha does not mean that you're problematic. Before I go further, I just want to say like I don't think that there is anything necessarily wrong with uh, alpha male leads. Some of them are problematic, some of them their behaviors are abusive, but, in, but you can have alpha male, male leads that have you know zero problematic behaviors too it's not just the type it's how you implement the type but one thing that I I, I I think I've always been drawn to whenever there's been books where there's love triangles I'm usually drawn to the one that doesn't get picked because usually the alpha male gets picked and then the goofier the goofier guy who's like I love you and I want to be with you uh doesn't end up with her it's the guy who's been pushing her away the whole time that gets a girl a lot and I do subvert that trope in uh, multiple series of my books because it is one that I I I don't like um, if I'm being honest I mean that's one of the things that I, I, I don't like I don't like the guy who is pushing you away as the one who gets the girl it should be the guy who wants to be with you from the beginning and so that was kind of my natural inclination to begin with but starting with the water song series when I started writing the water song series I began, it was a lot more cognizant of the fact that I am writing for young adults I'm writing for uh, young people who are still forming their opinions on what healthy relationships look like and a lot of young people don't see models of healthy relationships in their homes or on TV and so I felt like it was important that I try to write characters that are um, a bit healthier. And so I, I, I think um, with my mother, my mother proves especially I think Peter has some definite toxic behaviors that as the series goes on I kind of um, it's not like I try to retcon it, but I try to like give more background. But then in a way, I'm kind of excusing some of those abusive behaviors. It is not okay for a love interest to try to kill you ever. <laughs> like no matter what's going on in their life, whether they're a vampire or they're angry at their brother, it's not okay. So we, Daniel was the first book boyfriend that I really was thinking about, okay, what kind of guy would I want, um, you know, my little sister to marry or I don't have a little sister, but if I had one, or, or my friends to marry. And so that was really what I went in mind with, with writing Daniel, was making a guy who is good, who is just a good guy, and making him um, sexy and dependable and loyal and strong and romantic. And, and so that is where, and so that Water Song series is my first cognizant behavior. And if you see going forward, I do that a lot. I don't, um, I don't really have a lot of alpha male leads in my books at all anymore. Um, really kind of flirts with the idea with it. I think in um, the the Canaan Chronicles, he's a little bit where he seems like he's going to be, but I didn't really like. I kind of started developing a, like as this playboy bad boy, but that really really wasn't what my heart's at because that's not that's not where that's not what I'm interested in. That's not what I want to write. I do think that just a good guy can be um, really sexy. Just having a decent guy who who really uh, listens and just pays attention and I think if you look at a lot of the male leads in my books you know with, with you know you've got Daniel, Asher, Gabe, um, Constantine even, uh, um, Loki, uh, Ridley, um, even even the ones before that I wasn't as cognizant like with with, with Laszlo, with Jack, it, it, it's they're all very much that way they're never they're n none of them are alpha leads, alpha male leads, and almost all of them they look to the the the, the woman in their life and, and defer to her a lot. Um, they can be protective at times, but I, I find I find protection protection can be sexy, but it can also be controlling, especially in in a lot of different types of fictions and in these situations where it is very life and death and they're fantastical situations. There is a need to be protective and cautious, but in the ever my everyday reader's life. 
someone who is really controlling about your life is usually a bad thing. You know, someone who, who has to know where you are every second, who is keeping track of you all the time. It's very important to me that, that, that the women in my books have a lot of autonomy and the men are never taking that away. They're always supporting them and lifting them up instead of holding them back. If a character is trying to hold them back, that is not the character they're going to end up with. Like every time. They make that, that a conscious decision that characters that I guess I, I just don't think, I don't, I don't find controlling this sexy. I don't, I don't. I mean, like, there are times where I think it can be to know that someone is protective and cares about you. I, it, yeah, it is, but there are lots of different ways to show that. And I think that someone just constantly like trying to dictate you and make decisions for you, um, you know, isn't okay. I mean, and these were things that were, I was, were especially important to me and I was especially uh, thoughtful of when writing um, my newest book, Bestow the Darkness. Um, the main character, Emma Lyeth, lives in a very, it's a very a small claustrophobic life inside uh, this religious sect. And it, she doesn't get to interact with men a lot. It's very, it's a very patriarchal society and, and it's very segregated and women, uh, purity is emphasized. And so they really try to keep them apart from each other and emphasize that sex and men are dirty. Um, so, and I think an alpha male lead in that environment would be terrifying actually for Emily to have someone else just coming in and pushing around and telling her what to do because that's what everyone has been doing her whole life. She's felt very controlled. Every aspect of her life is controlled. She doesn't get to pick out anything for herself. She never gets to have free time really or anything like that. And so having someone come in and just be like, okay, well, I'm going to control you more is not what I wanted for her. I also remember really, um, when the, I don't know if you guys have seen Flea Bottom. Um, it's a it's a show on some on Amazon, and uh, when it came out, when the second I think it was the second season came out, there was a a priest in the in the in the um, story who has a relationship with, or has a friendship I'll say with um, the main character of Flea Bottom, and a lot of the I, I remember reading a lot of the discourse about it, like what made him so sexy. And what I heard people say was that he listened. He listened to her. And I really thought about that. And I was like, that is sexy. Just having a guy just pay attention and, and listen. And that's really what Trent is. Trent has zero alphaness in him. He is very much... Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to be dominant. He doesn't want to control. He does want to protect. But I think it comes from a more um, submissive side. And it's not that he's even submissive. It's that he wants to love and be loved and that's important and he's very open about that this is what I what he wants and I think that becomes like a really huge thing for Emma Lyeth she has been so deprived of any kind of affection or attention and just having some kindness I mean I think that that's something that people it's hard to know if you've been deprived of kindness and attention like how desperate humans are for it and how wonderful it can feel and so Trent could have been a really bad guy and she would have easily followed him too in a lot of different ways but I didn't want him to be a bad guy I wanted him to be someone who could help show her who she could be and someone who could just listen to her to help her find her voice and to find her voice isn't talking for her or talking over her it's giving her a place to speak and so that's very much what I think I try to do with my male leads in general is not to have them talk over her not to have them talk for her not to have them stand in front of her like a shield I want them to stand next to her and give her just a place to speak and be who she is and to come into her power. I mean, that was really important in the, in the Trill trilogy. And, and you see how one of the guys is definitely trying to control her because he wants to keep her safe and he wants to protect her. But he's controlling every aspect of her. He's trying to get rid of her autonomy. He's pushing away. He's not listening to her or what she wants. He's just very much telling her how it's going to be. And it doesn't matter what she wants. And then there's another guy who's like, I want to listen to you. I want to find compromise. I know that you're amazing and I want to help you be the best you can be. And that's always going to be the guy who the character, my characters end up with because that is what I hope for the readers of my books. I hope that they are finding um, young men or women who are supporting them and lifting them up and building them up and giving them a place to find their voice and find out who they are as opposed to the ones who are telling them who they are and telling them how it's going to be with no room for conversation. And so, yeah, I do think that they're... they're, they're his sexiness and alpha stories, but I feel like there are so many alpha stories and I wanted to tell, I want to tell things that are different. I don't, I don't want someone just telling you what to do and I don't want it to be like, you're so powerful here, let me put you in a gilded cage. I want it to be like, we're going to be out in the world together, exploring the world together and fighting for what's right together. And so, yeah. 
and again I don't I just wanted to sound like I'm bashing it because I don't I do, I do think that, that it's sexy and good and I mean obviously like Batman is like the ultimate alpha and I love Batman so it doesn't um it doesn't always have to it's not like a bad bad thing you know I just this is it doesn't all have to be one thing there can be different flavors and I think in ro romance novels it, um the alpha flavor can be a dominant one and and so I, I do I made a conscious effort to do things a little bit different a little bit softer to have leads with a lot more sensitivity I mean I do I've got sensitive male leads my, I, I try to have them in touch with you know uh what they want and, and they're willing to to do things for it and they're they're not uh, afraid to say I love you and to say I want to spend time with you and I want to listen to you I mean that's you know so what about you do you prefer um alpha leads or more softer leads in your in your the in your romance novels and um who are some of your your favorite non-alpha romantic leads in, in, in literature or tv any anything you have i would love to hear from you guys uh, what you think because i would also love you know uh more recommendations too because like i said i do like it and it's not that i never read books with it i just you know always want to read more so um yeah let me know leave a leave a comment and tell me who your favorite is and yeah you can also tell me who my your favorite is of mine too i like to hear about my books too um, my newest book, Bestow the Darkness, is available now in ebook and it will be out in paperback in July. Um, and until next time, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe.